All right, guys, welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast. You guys are listening to episode 444 with one of my favorite people. Um, I miss him dearly on the New York comedy scene. I saw this yeah. guy years ago, loved him. And uh, like I said, I call him the Long Island assassin, uh, the man, the myth, Timmy Dillon. What's up, Tim? How are you? Thanks Thank for being on. Thank you, buddy. You know, my schedule's open. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty... It's fun for a week. This is all fun for a couple of weeks, you know? Yeah. And then you start to feel, see, we don't feel the shame. We used to feel like you'd feel shame if you went this long. And none of us really have gone this long. But even if you went a week without getting on stage, you'd feel like disgusted with yourself. You'd be like, I can't believe. Yeah, yeah. I feel guilty. But now yeah. that nobody's getting ahead of anybody else, nobody's allowed to work really that's been lifted so you just feel like nothing i'm just sitting around all day i feel nothing i don't feel good yeah. i don't feel bad it's like i'm not dreading what's coming but i'm also not excited it's a weird feeling of like every day is kind of the same day yeah like today it's funny you said that because today i said oh i gotta go take a shower and then i realized i took a shower 20 minutes ago so it's right. like, yes. i'm just yes. i'm, I'm kind of now let me ask you this are you because I've talked to people that said that they do have bouts with panic attacks or anxiety or unsure. Yeah. Are you having any kind of like psychological like thing or you were no. just like, no? No, and it's not that I, I'm not, I don't know. No, I'm not having any of that. I've had panic attacks before. I've certainly had anxiety. Um, but again, it, 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 it's interesting. It feels like uh, everybody is so fucked that, like, I'm, I'm almost like, I feel lucky, you know? Yeah. I feel kind of lucky, and I don't feel, like, panicked or anxiety-ridden. I feel like I'm lucky, and I feel for people that, are, that have jobs that put them in contact with the virus, and I feel yeah. for, like, people that are sick and shit. I just feel like if you're healthy and you've got a little bit of money – you're I keep reminding myself like yeah it's okay you're okay it's like you, there's a lot of people in a lot worse positions you know yeah I feel like that too I, I feel fortunate and, and uh, yeah. I'm feeling healthier you know my wife had some symptoms and we were kind of told yeah we were told by the doctor with certain things that happened that you know stay in and we're starting to feel better but somebody's like oh I'm sorry you went through that and I'm like look man there are people in really fucking worse positions that I'm in right, right. now and I got a house in the, you know, I'm sitting up here in the country with my family. So it could be a yeah. lot worse, but I saw this nurse. I want to ask you about this. I saw this nurse yeah. who was crying and she, yeah. said, she said she quit her job. And yeah. I don't know if you saw, she was crying and she quit. And, she, and as she was crying, she was saying the reason why she quit. You could tell she felt bad, but she was saying that these hospitals aren't protecting us. And I have children. Yeah. And yeah. I'm kind of going like, you know what? I can't. I can't really blame, like, if you have a little kids right. at home and, you know, you got to come home and the hospital's giving you, like, a fucking sock to put over your face or, yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's like, I yeah. can't really blame her for that, you know? I, it's tough to blame any of them. The nurses that I've talked to, they look at it like a war and they look at it like they don't want to abandon their, yeah. I think it depends on, like, how long you've worked at the hospital. Because I know people that are like, listen, these are my family, these are my coworkers, I've seen these people every single fucking day. I'm not going to walk out on them, you know? Right, right. Fuck the administrators, and we're going to do the best we can. Now, listen, that's easy for me to say because I'm fucking podcasting. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, yeah. I, I don't judge anybody. It's like, listen, I mean, I would like the nurses to go to work because I don't want to have to do it. I mean, that's the reality. So it yeah. would be nice if all the nurses and doctors went to work because I really don't want to do it. So yeah. that's the real answer. It's like, I don't really, I don't know how to ventilate people. So I would appreciate if you would do it because I don't really want to do it. I have a pretty busy schedule podcasting and sitting on my couch eating Apple Jack cereal, which you know I've not what? eaten since I'm 11. I, I, I think of this and I, it's uncontrollable laughter. I would get thinking about this. And I thought about it just yeah. now. Imagine me and you or our friends, yeah. our comedian yeah. friends, right? And whether at the stand or the cellar yeah. or the comedy yeah. store, Imagine yeah. we were literally in the trenches in World War One or two. It just, yeah. it would be. <laughs> it doesn't be, feel be like that's where we're meant to be. You no know? way. Yeah, it does not feel like that's where we're meant to be. So, I mean, I listen, I love everybody. I wish everybody the best. But it's like, I don't feel like, I, I, I did not go into the medical profession. 
Uh, that's not my profession. Sure. I am a, I'm a podcaster. Uh, you know, are nurses and doctors more important than podcasters? For now. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, listen, we, we, everybody's got different challenges. So, yeah. you know, this is a brutal, nasty bug. I feel bad for the, for the people that are put, you know, in contact with it. Yeah. Um, and, and listen, this shows us that like our country has some issues that we can't get these people masks. You know, it was never a good idea to be like, let's have everything that we need made in China. It's not a good idea. Yeah, no. It's not a good idea. They yeah. make like 90% of our antibiotics. It's like no good. That's so crazy, man. We need, we need to start making some shit here again, like especially essential shit, things that we need, like masks. And, uh, you know, we, we need to make that in America, even though you have to pay workers more or whatever, you know, you, you got to do that stuff here. It's done in China. And it's like we're depending on China. And uh, it's just a bad system. You know, what's funny is that like, yeah. we tell dick jokes in like the Palisades Mall and we, yes. we, we get on stage at night, one o'clock in the morning sometimes. Yeah. And, and we're all professionals with this. Isn't it funny? We're yeah. all, we're all well, scientists, I, I'm a, Tim. I mean, I am a microbiologist. I tell people <laughs> that now. I say I'm a microbiologist because nobody knows anything about the virus. So I like to just make people feel stupid all day yeah. uh, because some, somebody, a friend called me the other day. They go, you know, Tim, on that cruise ship, they found that the, the virus lived for 17 days, but I'd read an article right before it called me and I said, that's the RNA of the virus, dummy. That's not the infectious <laughs> material. That's the RNA of the virus. Now, I don't know what RNA is, right? So, yeah. acid. I could, gun to my head, couldn't tell you, but I, it's, I, just, I just say things like that ah. and I go, I go, it's not the infectious material. You're being hysterical. Uh, I have a background in microbiology. I don't know anything, you know, but I think it's just, it's time now to just make things up. Yeah, and you know what? You said something good about that. You said something that, that's funny about that is that just say an initial. You know, like if, yeah. you, just, if you just throw out, right. like, oh, it's the GBI. Did you hear the GBI report? As soon yeah. as you say the GBI report, somebody's yeah. thinking, oh, this guy knows something more. <laughs> well, the other thing is everybody's got a model they're looking at. Everybody's got a model that predicts, you know. And, like, to me, it's like enough with that. Like, give it to the government. Give the, I don't need every day to wake up to a new horror, you know. Yeah. Like, just let – the other thing is when this first started to happen, did you notice how many friends – had people, uh, sources in the government, high up sources in the government. Yeah. It was interesting because none of those people could get you a parking pass during the regular time. But yeah. now that there's a pandemic, every loser I knew had a highly placed source in the military or the government. And I was like, right. this is very interesting that, uh, you know, uh, that people now are finding, I'm like, well, how about this? Ask that highly placed source, the government, for a job next yeah. time. You yeah. know? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. everybody's uncle is a doctor on the front lines who's yes. telling you when yes. it's really going to be over. And we're going to have to watch these celebrities because you know a lot of these celebrities are going to claim to have this and not have it. This is how sick some people are. They're going to either have a very mild case of it. That You know, yeah. there's certain celebrities right now that are like on their Instagrams. We're like, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I just yeah. want to let it. So it's like, Dude, we are sick. I mean, human beings are sick people. So you got to watch everybody. Yeah. And I was talking to, actually, I was talking to uh, Joe DeRosa yesterday. And yeah. we're talking about like, so when I went on, I, I made it very clear. When I went on the Jim and Sam show, when I went on Andrew Schultz's show, the first thing I said, and I wanted to say this, even though my wife and I were not feeling well and then losing the right. sense of smell and taste, Right. Um, and real sense of smell and taste. Not like stuff right. like right. feeling fine and not being able to smell whiskey. And yeah. then that happening to my wife five days later and our doctor saying, listen, that's what we're seeing. And ages 40 and younger that have that, it's usually mild. But when I went on those podcasts and radio shows, the first yeah. thing I said, Tim, was I want to be clear. Me and my wife did not test positive for this. This is what we've been going through. These are our symptoms. Right. Because, yeah, I'm not trying to, what I, what I really, when I first said, I was talking to Scholes and I go, listen, I don't want to talk about this. And he was like, why? He's like, why don't you want to? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like if somebody does lose smell and taste and they have it mild, they could be a carrier. So if I could help that person and say, stay the fuck home. Right. You know, and that's what yeah. I was doing. But of course. for a celebrity to come out and say that they have this and start coughing and, and doing that, that is, how gross is that? Yeah. Well, it's, it's what's going to happen, man. 
And like, I think I had it in early March, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's very possible. I had a lot of symptoms of it. I was very sick. I got diagnosed with strep throat. However, I've since found out that a lot of the NBA guys, Rudy Gobert, people like that, that got diagnosed with COVID also had strep throat. They had a co-infection. So wow. I, I had a cough for about three weeks. My cough lingered for two weeks after I was you know, still feeling a little better, but my cough was still there. That's not strep. So I might have had a co-infection. Like I might have had a sinus infection, bronchitis, who knows? But it wasn't in my lungs. It was nothing in my lungs. I had no respiratory, but I was coughing. And I had a stuffed head and I was fatigued, fever, all that stuff. Um, you know, who knows? You know, they're going to be, we're going to all get these antibody tests, okay? Yeah. Yeah. These antibody tests are going to tell all of us we didn't have it. We're going to throw them out and say they're full of shit. I know I have it. <laughs> we're going to say, fuck this shit. We know we have. I mean, I don't know, man. I tend to think this quarantine is going to last till about June and the people are going to leave their house going, I don't care if I die. Yeah. I got to get the fuck out of my house. I don't know how. They're going to shut this. I mean, they're talking, these people are talking shutdowns for a long time. And I don't know how people are going to react to that, especially when it's 90 degrees and some people don't have air conditioning. And they're like, listen, I'm leaving my house, bro. I'm going to the beach. I don't care what you say, you know? Yeah. I mean, we get a, we get a ocean house. We get a house at the ocean uh, late August every year. And, you know, they're saying, oh, maybe you could do it. Listen, if we take the blood test and <clears throat> we find yeah. out that we got the antibodies and stuff, right. we'll still go on that trip as long as it's just us. But, like, if it's forbidden and we're going to hurt somebody or there is shit. Then you're not, yeah, you won't do it. Then I'm just not. Listen, we're going to adapt. That's the thing. Everybody's right. talking about yeah. what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Nothing is going to happen that's going to end the world. You're going to either right. stay home and find a way to make money. Right. And, and, and live your life. And comedians are going to either adapt through Patreon right. or doing, well, I mean, I don't think I'm doing a virtual stand-up show. I just don't think I can bring no, it. No, 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 no. Don't do that. You it know? hurts. It hurts stand-up in the long term to do that. I, think. I would never, I would never yeah. do that. And, and like lame. Looks we're going to ask, yeah, I think so too, but we're going to adapt through podcasts and, and doing stuff like this. My wife fortunately works from home. We have a lot of friends yeah. that can work from home. So like, yeah, yeah it sucks, man. I want to get back out there, but at the same time, I got to be honest, I'm enjoying yeah. this. I am enjoying yeah. this. To be well, you don't want to also, you don't listen, you don't want to get somebody sick. You don't want to do the wrong thing. I would just, I want to know, and I know that we can't know this. I just want to have the date when I, we can go out again. Like I want, I'm, I'm looking at it like a, like prison, even though it's not prison. I'm looking at it like I'm doing a sentence. I'm doing time, doing a bit. Yeah. So just let me know when parole, let me know when I have a shot here. If it's September 1st, cool. Just let me know so I can put my eyes on September 1st. I continue to do what I do. It's just this indefinite nature of fucking not knowing, yeah. you know, when, when, when this ends, it's bugging me out. I think and, I would be yeah. shocked. I'm going to be honest with you. And this is just yeah. a prediction. I yeah. would be shocked if we were not on stage. The absolute, in my opinion, I'd be shocked if we weren't on stage in the fall, September, October, I think we'll be on. Stage. I hope you, I hope you're right. I hope you're I mean, right. Think about that. that. What are we? We're in mid April. That's May, yeah. June, July, August, September. Dude, that's half a year from now, dude. I think I think that the thing becomes the question becomes what will change between now and then, and right. if it's you know like are there antiviral drugs that are working, are they are, is there a vaccine that looks promising, are the the cases tapering off, are people back at work because I think comedy clubs will be the last thing to open things like that will be the final straw bars and shit yeah yeah it'll be the last one so I think it'll be what happens between now and then I think that's going to be a big um, a big predictor of it. I, I would love to be, you know, doing stuff, you know, in, you know, in, in as soon as it's safe to do, but I read the doomsday scenarios. And then I read the scenarios where people are like, we're all going back to work next week. <laughs> Both of them probably aren't true. There's probably some middle ground that we reach in the fall. How that, you know, what's going to be interesting is how these clubs open up and who's able to survive. What clubs are going to be able to survive? That's a great question. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think those clubs are the ones that have been like staples. You know, yes. those are the Store, clubs that, yes, seller, just yeah. liquid, just like money's just coming in hand over fist. It's sold out. It's a it's a well oiled machine. But then you're going to have some clubs that like, dude, that that are going to go down. And it's really it's yeah. sucks, man. sad, it's just, it's sad, man. You know, it's sad. And there's nothing you can really do. I can't pay your staff. You know, every club is a GoFundMe now. I can't yeah. pay your staff. I don't know what to tell you. You got to, you know, we got to get the girls to the unemployment office. 
I, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but we all lost our jobs too. So, you know, like we have to get real yeah. about this. Uh, we can't have like a GoFundMe from a, a comedy clubs and stuff. I just, I don't know what we're doing here. What about every comedian doing a GoFundMe? You can't do it. You know, it's like, you can't do it. And it's like, they did that laugh aid, which was a little wacky. And I was like, oh, they're giving money for nurses for protective gear. They're like, no, they're giving it to comics. I was like, what? I'm like, there's, <laughs> there's nurses fucking yeah. without masks. You're giving the money to, con it's like, do it privately. Have a bunch of comics yeah. that are really wealthy, do a private fund. But if you're going to have famous people go out and do a fundraiser right now, it should probably be for people on the front lines of this and not people sitting on their couch. People dropping dead, dude, that are exposed yeah. to this more. What's fucked up is it's people that are with it every day. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's like they're saying that there's overexposure of this. Yeah, thing. it's prolonged exposure, man. And, those, you know, bus drivers, uh, people that work on subways, nurses, of course people that work at grocery stores, people are being exposed to this. That's why I think that like, I think we should cancel. And I'm not really for canceling student loan debt in general because fuck those kids. But I think right. we should cancel the nurses debt. Like if nurses have student loan debt right now, we should cancel it. Well, and because, he, but, yeah. again, here's, a, here's a question though too, Tim, you made a point and like these bus drivers are dying. Why are they running the buses? Why are they fucking yeah, running well, the buses? Well, cause then the buses are getting the nurses to the hospitals, I guess. Like I think that like, you can't oh. shut down all of society, right? Like, you know, I went to a drive through the other night because they said it was safe. Then I called my friend who's a nurse. And I'm like, is it safe? She's like, no. Yeah. I'm like, but I pureled my hands before I ate, after I ate. She goes, she goes, it's not safe at all. I said, what do you mean? She goes, you don't know what the hell's going on in there. I said, it's yeah. Taco Bell. Of course they're doing the right thing. They're taking precautions. I love how you're still going to Taco Bell. I just went one time. You know, they don't even know Corona's a thing in Taco Bell. They have no idea coronavirus is even happening. So they they just, I don't know what the hell. But it's like, we're at a point now where it's like, I don't, the only thing that's safe is cooking. I've been cooking every day. Let me tell you something. Yeah. It sucks. It, there's so much, me you got to clean up. You got to do the whole yeah. thing. It's like. You know, enough already. After a while, you say to yourself, like, I want to just fucking get out of this house. Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, I'm like, I made meatballs the other day. And it's like, nice. it's great. It's great. You know, my grandmother used to make great meatballs. She's Irish, but she learned how to cook from an Italian lady in Brooklyn. That's yeah. how all Irish people learned how to cook. Because Irish yeah. people have no, no cuisine. I mean, they're, they're, they're animals. <laughs> so are the Italians, but they can cook. But yeah. Uh, I made meatballs the other day, but the work, I'm not even fucking around. The work it takes to make a, a meal like that. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm getting tired of people talking about how they're good cooks now and they could cut hair. Yeah, oh, enough. It's like you, enough. Can't, you can't cut hair good and you're not a good yes. cook. You're and not. you're not a good cook. And I'm also a little yeah. sick of these environmentalists that are like, the swans are back in the canals of Venice and the air is cleaner. I'm like, that's good. In a month from now, when you're killing your family, Tell me about this dolphins and the swans again, you know? Yeah. Dolphins are pulling up in Venice. It's not a sustainable trade-off. I like dolphins, but I don't – I'm, I'm for me over the yeah. dolphin. So it's yeah. not a sustainable trade-off to have 25% or whatever it is, unemployment, and then have the dolphins in the water, yeah. you know? Like, that's not doing it for us. Like, that's yeah. the problem. And a lot of these idiots are like, well, this is what had to happen so that we could clean up our earth. I'm like – what do you mean? All countries shut down and everybody just looks at a, a, an yeah. amount of money as it dwindles? No, that's not, that's not a trade-off. That, that, trade that brings me to a question I want to ask you. Do you, have yeah. any, do you have any feeling, gut, whatever it might be, thoughts of any kind of conspiracy here at all? <sighs> I don't know. There's a, it's, couple of, there's a couple of wild there's, ones out there. There's, a, there's like 10 or 20 of them. Um, I think so. I think where a lot of those conspiracies come from yeah. is that a lot of people don't want to live with the uncertainty of like nature doesn't give a fuck, right? Right. Nature doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Germs don't care. They don't give a shit. No. Swine flu didn't care. SARS didn't care. All of, you know, uh, was there a conspiracy in 1917 with the Spanish flu? Was there a conspiracy? Like, is every, is every uh, right. uh, thing a conspiracy? It's like, Listen, could this have been a, a bioweapon engineered by the Chinese? Could it have been one that the U.S. and China were working on to get? Who knows? Like, yeah. listen, I don't tend to believe the government, 
you know, when the government was telling me how bad this virus was, I called my friends who were nurses and doctors, right? Yeah. Because the government said a lot of shit that isn't true. And so is the media. Remember when the media told us those Catholic school kids were like beating up those Native Americans and the Covington kids? And then we found out that the kid just stand there and smiled. He didn't even do anything wrong, you know? <laughs> yes. So it's like the media is full of shit. I don't believe the government unless I could. But I called my friends who were doctors and nurses. They said, Tim, it's fucked. People, it's serious. Don't go out. It's not good. Yeah. Young people are getting it, you know, whatever. So I tend to trust friends that I've had people that tell me. But yeah, it is, it's, what's weird is that, the, you know, the Chinese disease research facility, bio research, whatever. Being right in, there. It's right there. Yeah. Here's the most plausible conspiracy I've heard. I've heard, and this is plausible to me, that they were working on viruses like this. They were injecting animals. They were working on coronaviruses that live in bats. Somebody in the in the a guard, somebody with no fucking money, somebody who owed somebody money, started selling these animals to wet markets out, out the back door. Yep. Started basically selling the pigs and the bats, whatever they were testing on, they were selling to wet markets to just make money. Right. And then one of those bats was infected with this coronavirus. Now that could that could plausibly be the thing um when people are like was this released i don't know that it was released because people a lot of all conspiracies to me are ways to make money and to me everybody even really rich people are losing money right now and nobody knows what's going to happen next nobody knows how the economy is going to respond this has never been done before so i don't think it's plausible that even a really uh, even a country like china would release this because they don't know what's going to happen. And the Chinese economy is dependent on the American economy and, and vice versa. Like, like they, you know, they buy a lot of our debt. They manufacture a lot of things that we buy. That's why Trump's always talking about that trade deficit. So I don't think it's in their interest to have every world economy shut down. I just don't think it's in anyone's interest. I think probably yeah. what happened was this is either a, uh, 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 something that leaked out of a lab that they were working on in Wuhan, or that it's just a natural thing. A guy ate a fucking bat. That's really fucking people's heads up. Yeah. They're going, wait a minute, I can't go to work because a guy on the other end of the world ate a bat? Yeah. I don't have any money because a guy ate a bat. That sounds like a conspiracy, but that's probably what happened. Probably yeah. what happened is like, you know, there was a guy on Rogan who said when he visited one of those wet markets in China, you had a case of birds and a case of ferrets, yeah. like a crate stacked on top of each other. And the guy said avian flus are, 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 are massive things. There's a lot of viruses that birds get, you know? And he goes, if one of those birds was infected, bit one of those ferrets, and then a ferret bit a human, I mean, right there, you have a pandemic. So yeah. it's not that hard to imagine how this thing could happen naturally. I, I hear that. And I definitely, I think as far as your conspiracy, the one you think is the most yeah. viable one is the one next yeah. to the, I, I think that their bio lab being so close. Yeah. So here, here's something that just, I yeah. don't know, man, I don't know if it's my, my Sicilian, I don't trust anybody, yeah. but the, yeah. the thing that is weird to me, and I heard a doctor say this was yeah. that it's, that it, and listen, I know this is going to sound nuts, but yeah, it's I, okay. find, I find it very weird that children and healthy people don't get this. And, and he said something that was kind of like, he, this is a doctor talking. He goes, it's kind of weird that an immature immune system with smaller lungs and, uh, and just not enough to fight is kind of walking through this a little bit. And, yeah. and the people that are older and sick. And that was one thing that kind of made me, like I said, scratch my head and go, that there, you know, that is kind of it's amazing that like people yeah. that are younger that don't even have fully developed lungs, and this is a respiratory virus. They're kind of walking through it, and um, and you know, I don't know, man, the population thing in China. I don't know. It could be a guy eating a fucking bat. We, we'll never know. I mean, I think I think you'd have to look at it and go. Uh, you know, would China? And listen, maybe I don't know, but would China re intentionally release? something like this because it didn't do like listen it's not good population control because it doesn't right. kill enough people right, right? It, it killed what let's say at most it killed one or two million people in china that's 
nothing. Right. That's nothing. There were 2 million people born the day the other ones were yeah, dying. Exactly. So it, it's like, it, I don't see it as that effective as a bioweapon. I think it's, it's effective because it shuts down the economy. Um, but a lot of the economy shutdowns have been voluntary. Countries going, we need to get a handle on this. I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I'm a big conspiracy guy. I'm having Whitney Webb on my podcast who's written a lot about this. She's written a lot about, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates who do all these vaccines and stuff. And it's like, they, they, it is shady. It is yes. weird. I mean, it is like, listen, these are billionaires. You don't know who the hell they are and what they're doing and what they believe in. And it's like, you know, some of them have gone on the record about population control and have said things like that. But at the end of the day, I tend to believe with this particular one, I tend to believe everybody knew this was going to happen. Every doctor said, this, every epidemiologist was like, there's a really good chance something like this happens. We've had versions of it, right? We had yeah. SARS. We had MERS that emerged from the Middle East. SARS was South Asia. We swine had flu, right? swine flu. We had those things. And you say to yourself, all said and done, I think this may kill less people than the seasonal flu. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't have shut down the economy because it is a respiratory disease and you need ventilators and you got to treat people. You don't want to collapse the hospital system. That's right. But all said and done, I don't think you're going to have an amount of deaths here that are going to significantly alter the population. No. You know? I don't, right. I, I, yeah. No, I don't think so. It's just not, you know, I think that somebody would say, were they working on something like that? We don't know. Yeah, I think it's very possible. It's a bioweapon. There's a little oopsie in Wuhan. <laughs> and, it, you know, this right. shit leaked out. It was a problem. I mean, you know, when that Malaysia Airlines plane goes down, it turns out the Russians shot it down. We found that out three years later. I mean, wait a minute. Know, the, uh, the first one? Yeah, that's all right. I mean, the Russians took that down. I mean, 100%. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I yeah, I thought. mean, yeah, I mean, or I might be getting it wrong. It might not be Malay. Might, the one plane that went down, nobody knew why it went down. Yes. And then, it, yeah. It, then it came out that it was like the Russians had fought. You know, of course, the Russians were like, no, we won't. No. Um, and then America, you know, America's lies about all kinds of things. And then we find out later that these, these not I love how dictators, dictators who run like communist countries are going, we yeah. would never. No. Yeah. I mean, we would not, but it's, it's the same thing where it's like Trump, when Trump talks, he's making things up. It just got, you know what I mean? Like he's just, he said the other day, he goes, we're in business in two weeks. We're going back out. We're in business. And it's like, he knows that's not true. Yeah, yeah. It's a crazy thing to say. It's a <laughs> dangerous thing to say. Yeah. Because if you say that, some Yahoo's going to go out today. Somebody's yeah. going to go, well, if two weeks is we're all out, I'm going out today. I'm getting the shop ready today. Um, yeah. So it's like any of these, dude, anybody that's a billionaire that, uh, you know, that's a, that I, I just don't trust anybody. I'm, I got to know you to trust you. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's, yeah. and that's a Sicilian shit. Like, Sicilians don't fucking look at the TV and trust anything. They're like, did I hear it from my friend? Yeah. From my family member? Because they're like, I don't trust anybody. So like, I'm just always, but I think this, this might be fucking us all up in the head because this might be just one of those cases, dude, of nature just saying, yeah, you're, you think you're the big dogs on this planet? You're not. No. And this was the first time, especially dude, when, when, when I lost my smell after laying in bed feeling like shit and coughing, and then I said, you know what, dude? Like, I'm in the country. Like, right. I'm in the country. So if this is, the, if this is what I think it is, and, and I feel well, How like, do you think you... How do you and your wife think you got it? There's two ways that we think okay. that, that this happened. Because I know you're racking your brain. I think I got it in Vancouver because I, there's just a lot of Asians. I th <laughs> I got mine in um, I got mine at a Mexican restaurant I believe that was packed out on my wife's birthday on March 14th because two days later, two days later I was achy in bed I felt like shit. Then something that was common with this was that you feel good after a day or so, which I did. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden just energy down and this went on with a cough at night for about five days and then I lost my senses and then my wife did five days later. And she had the same thing as me. And the doctor was like, that sounds like it. But 
being up here, I have this land, I'm in the country, I'm far away from the city, and I'm just going, dude, you don't matter. We don't matter. If nature wants right. us gone, it doesn't yeah. matter how fucking strong you are. Your ego means nothing. You're, you're nothing. In the grand scheme yeah. of things, we're nothing. We're just right. we're, we're these little things on this gigantic planet that can just be and wiped And, dude, out you like start that. to see, like, a lot of these people that are like, this virus ain't nothing. Some of them are dying now. You know, some of those guys on Facebook, they were like, oh, fuck this. This is a hoax. We don't care. Some yeah. of them are dying now. That's why, like, I'm always super careful to be like, yeah, man, I don't know what this is. I think it's probably brutal. And I just want to because I don't want to put a signal out into the universe. That, like, you know, like, hey, I'm an idiot. Come kill no, me. I, I, I fucked up with it a long time ago. And I said, guys, on Twitter, I said something and I admitted I was wrong. I go, guys, there's 328 million people in the United States. Okay. In the grand scheme of things, this is a very, let's not get nuts, but it's, and I got into an argument with a family member saying like, Paul, yeah. this is a fuck. This is ridiculous, man. This is ridiculous. Right. It's not ridiculous. And it's not the flu because yeah. in a hundred years ago was the last time right. the regular flu doesn't flood hospitals. The, right. the, the regular flu doesn't have no hallways in a hospital because people are dying on the floor gasping for their last yeah. fucking breath. So yeah. this is this is different, man. This is contagious. It's airborne. I told somebody too. I go. They did a simulation of what it's like if somebody's in the supermarket yeah. coughing. Yeah. If you're in the supermarket in aisle seven coughing and somebody's in the aisle six, that that's in the air, dude. Like, don't now, here's what I here's what I will say. We will look back, depend on this, and and we might say to ourselves the right way to have gone about this and i don't know that this is the case or not was not a shutdown of everything we might say that we might go and i'm not saying that we will but we might say we should have basically built herd immunity quicker like we should have put people out there yes. that were not vulnerable young people without pre-existing conditions and put them out there and had them develop a herd immunity to this quicker because we can't really stop the spread of a virus. Even with a shutdown, it's just going to spread slower. So there is the argument. I've read some smart doctors who've said, listen, the social distancing is important to not overwhelm our healthcare system, but a long-term way to beat the virus is we need to mitigate the virus. We cannot contain it. We need to be able to treat it, and we need to be able to have the hospital beds for people. But it is unrealistic to think that if we shut down everything, the virus will stop. It will just spread slowly instead of, because what happens is kids develop herd immunity to this. What we're doing by canceling schools is young kids are not developing a herd immunity to this. You want a whole generation of people right. who develop a herd immunity. The majority of them are going to be asymptomatic. They're, I love, I'm a doctor now. Isn't this great? I was retarded a week ago. I'm a, I'm a literal doc. I have a degree and now as a doc. And what's funnier is that I'm listening to you. You're, you're, listen, this is the funniest thing. You're talking so fucking convincingly. I'm, I'm looking at you right now as if you have a fucking PhD from Yale. I swear, Tim, I got so into what you were just saying that I yeah. actually started to believe it. Meanwhile, yeah. I saw you in the original yeah. room just yeah. fucking, yeah. Oh. Just screaming at people. But I, I read it, but this is just from some dumb article or from some doctor I read. And he goes, yeah. listen, you got to let the kids get it. Because he yeah. goes, the problem is if grandma lives with you, you don't want grandma to get it. Right. So you got to find a way to isolate people who are vulnerable. But we need the kids to go out and get it. Otherwise, it's 18 months, 24 months till you have a vaccine. How are you going to shut down? At the end of 24 months, there's no economy. So right. you can't, you got to figure out a way to fucking just figure it out and go back out. So even though this is serious and people are dying, you know, the other, the other thing is like, can we, can we shut down the economy for 18 months? I don't think so. No, 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 you can't shut right. it down. You can't shut it down for that long. I like what Germany's doing. I heard Germany is testing people and the people that had it and, and are, are recovered are getting immunity clearance certificates. And those people I believe are yes. going to go out into their society and still contribute. So you know, it'd be funny if we did comedy and like you yeah. had to get tested and then everybody yeah. in the audience had a certificate. Yeah, everybody beat COVID. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, how quick are those fake immunity certificates going to start getting printed? Oh, Very dude. quick. You'll be able oh. to buy one under a fucking pizzeria in the village 
in yes, the you, everybody would be getting their fake COVID bracelets when they're 19. Like, you know, when they're 18, 19, you used to get fake IDs. Now you get fake COVID bracelets. So you can go, just so you can go out and eat at a diner. Well, let me ask you this one. Yeah. If you found out on August 11th, if, if, if Dr. Fauzi and Trump and everybody comes out on August 11th, which we're talking, what, four months from now, and they go, guys, yeah. you are free to go out, and you got booked, and that night, August 11th, yeah. that night, the booker of, the, of your club, whatever, the comedy store, wherever, the, the, the stand seller, goes, come down, we have a lineup, people are, you know, getting reservations. Are you going back that first night or no? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It really I'm Here's the way I, I got to be honest. I'm thinking a little differently now. I'm not going to put myself at risk for shit money. Right. So I'm making money. I think this is, I think the club system of comedy is going to evolve. And I think that like, we're going to do one nighters and a lot, like I'm going to schedule four or five one nighters and then drive to each of them. I don't think we're going to be on a plane every week. Maybe we will. I don't know. But now that I'm like home more and I'm not traveling every week and I feel better and I'm like, yeah, I'm not eating just food that I grab after a show at 1130 at night. I mean, I don't know. I, it's hard to answer. If it was at the comedy store and it was like four blocks from my house, that's a different calculation. You know, yeah, maybe I pop in there, you know, it's four blocks away. If you told me, hey, your funny bone weekend is on uh, and it's going to be on in June. Uh, but I took the antibody test and I haven't had this shit. Am I going to go fly to Omaha and go do a show and, and, and maybe get this thing for, for the money that I was making? Probably not. And the fact that like, you know, those show, I mean, those shows aren't going to be packed. I don't think, I mean, right before the restaurant order was put in place for the last two weeks before they officially shut down restaurants, um, you know, most restaurants, they just did a study in Ohio. They had one in London. They had lost half their foot traffic before it was illegal. So before they shut them down, half the people just stopped going. So yeah. I don't really know, man. I don't really know. If, if, if I take an antibody test and they go, you've had it, great. But am I going to put myself at risk to do a spot? Probably not. Yeah. You know? I, uh, because I'm making money on my podcast yeah. and I'm in the position – where I, 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 I'm doing videos and other things that are fun and creative. I mean, I, 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 it would really depend. But I think a lot of people, I mean, listen, dude, if I sell, like right now, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to a system where I sell eleven or 1,200 tickets and I make $2,500. That's never going to happen again. Right. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, start looking at, and I spoke to my agent about this right before I got on the thing. If I go out now, I'm going to go into a club on a Wednesday night, sell it out, maybe add a second show, make the money and move the fuck on. I'm not doing seven shows for, for no money. And by the way, the big guys are going to go back to the clubs. Like club weekends, I think, are going to go to the Seguras and the people that can sell out seven or eight shows. Like I think that I'm going back to targeted one-nighters because, listen, man, I'm going to have to build new material. I'm not going to have been on stage for six months. I kind of want my fans. I don't want a, 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 a random room of people. I, I want my fans to like, because we're going to all like wor be working out new shit. We're going to be trying to, you know, I think it's going to be, I think the whole thing's going to change. I, you know, I don't know about that. I, I agree with you yeah. in some sense, but I think I'll be honest with you, Tim. I think like if people are growing during this, I, you know, yeah. there's, there's, listen, there's two sides. We were on Bobby Kelly's podcast talking about, it, we're arguing. Um, I think people are really going to want to see their favorite comedians live again. I think you might be right to start. I think yeah. like when we first get back, they're going to go big names to get, make sure that those first weekends are packed and they're back in yeah. But um, I think if you're growing and you're Patreon and your podcast and someone's like, oh, this guy's yeah. coming to town, I'm, I'm hoping that things go back. But I have a June, my first theater show is June 27th at the Wilbur in Boston. And they obviously haven't postponed it yet. But if they say to me, hey, dude, were you test? I mean, listen, tickets were being sold months before this. And, right. You know, you got to sell 900 tickets. And, and I had months. Right. And now it's like now it's completely uncertain. But if they told me, yeah, like, listen, it's on and people are buying tickets, it's up to you. I would just say, which I think is going to be available in two weeks, the antibody test, I would make sure that obviously myself, I was clear. 
I mean, I'm not doing, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not doing a fucking meet and greet for a good year. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing, man. I mean, I'm going to also follow what I see other people doing that I respect, right? So I'll look at what you do. I'll look at what Drew Rogan does. I'll look at what, you know, people that I respect do. Um, I'm just kind of like, listen, I don't know what's going to happen. I wasn't in love with the deals that I was doing before the pandemic, to be honest. <laughs> I, you know what I, I, I It wasn't. I was not yeah. in love with doing seven shows at a funny bone, selling 1,000 or 1,100 tickets and having them go, oh, hey, the bonus is at 1,300 tickets. You're yeah. 200 tickets short. You've grossed the club $25,000 and you're making 2,500. That wasn't working before the bat, the pandemic, the Wuhan. I didn't like that before. So I think this just accelerates my like not love of, of that system and going, the best clubs, you know, listen, I get it. I'll do them. But like, you know, if I'm going into a club and I'm selling 1,200 tickets over a weekend and I'm making – a guarantee plus a five hundred dollar nightly bonus, but I'm not making a percentage door deal bonus. Yeah, and 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 especially those clubs now that haven't been open for seven months are going to be like, hey man, we got to price in yeah. the fact that we haven't made any fucking money. So like to me, if I can go into that town, get a one nighter, sell it out for three hundred people, maybe add a second show, that makes a lot. And and do like four or five of them together, be like Tim Dillon tours the south, and do seven or eight nights. And then yeah. drive instead of getting on 10 planes. Yeah. I think that's just going to be a better scenario for me personally, because I don't want to, to get, this has made me think differently about health, about at life, about everything, yeah. about time. So it's like, I don't want to be on a plane every Thursday anymore, you know, for, for, for no money, you know? No, I, I listen, I get it. I mean, I think everybody should take this time and yeah. make the best of it for them. And if it's with you, if it's, if it's health and eating and all of a sudden it's like, right. for me, I'm just totally the one thing that I've always been horrible at. And I never really cared. And I shouldn't say care, but like, I don't care about doing a fucking video on Instagram going, Hey, right. I'm making eggs. And like, right. but now I realized, dude, I had managers go, Paul, you're, you're so bad at social media. We're going to take over. And yeah. I'm kind of seeing now because yeah. before, dude, it was like, what dates am I doing? I want to do stand up. I want to get better at stand up. You know, right. I like, yeah. I think my first hour was good. My second hour yeah. was better. I want the next one to be better. I want to just keep getting better at stand up. And the things that I was lacking was, was this shit. Yeah. And, and it was like, you know, so I'm working on that. But also, dude, being a, a not even trying to sound corny and shit, but being yeah. like a better husband and father. And of being, course, you no. Know, and like being able to be like, dude, I'm, I'm fucking home now. Like my kids going, dad, you're not going to the city tonight. And I'm like, no. And they're just right. like, holy shit. So I right. then you have to sit him down and go, there is no city, son. It's <laughs> all over. <laughs> yeah. Remember this picture? No, yeah. my <laughs> it's gone. Sweet dreams. You, you know? better cherish that weekend of Christmas. Right. In yeah. Hat. All the tigers in the Bronx Zoo have coronavirus, son. It's crazy. How are these fucking tigers getting tested? You know, you know it's, it's, it's funny. I, called, I talked to my vet today and I said, listen, yeah. I said, if my dog runs up to somebody that could have been contacted, can my dog get it? And China and uh, the UK are saying that cats have the coronavirus, but not so much the COVID-19 and they can't give it to people. But they've seen no cases in dogs or cats actually transmitting it to people. And interesting. the head vet, like the Surgeon General of, of yeah. Animals, said no too. But that, that is interesting. Let me ask you this. What are you doing at night? Like in the time that you would get ready, you'd go out to the, you said the comedy store is like your home club yeah. out there. Yes. And, and you'd walk four blocks and you'd get something. Yes. To, you'd do a spot yes. and hang out. Yeah. In that, in that time now at home, is it movies? Are you going nuts? Like, what are you doing to pass it? So I, we do two podcasts a week. We do a, 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 an episode for everybody. And we do a Patreon episode. We also do. That's how, by the way, that's how lazy we are that you just go. Yeah. Listen, I'm doing two hours a week. I got two hours and a week. And I got 58 work. hours of nothing. Yeah, I got no, but it's a dude. It's a lot of nothing. I mean, we do a sketch maybe once a week, a, a fun little video. I do that once a week. I'll, you know, do, I'm not doing a lot of podcasts. I'll do yours. I'll do people's like that. I appreciate um, it, man. No, of course. There's a lot of nothing. There's a lot of nothing. There's no way around it. There's a lot of nothing. I take long walks, four or five mile walk through Beverly Hills with his $30 million homes. And I like, I look at them. I'm like, it's going to be okay. Right. I talk to Gates, you know, private Gates and shit. 
It's okay. like, you know, every now and then you see somebody walk out with a Louis Vuitton face mask and a dog. It's uh, like, I don't know. I mean, it's wild out there. But I just, there's a lot of nothing. Louis Vuitton, you see Louis Vuitton face masks? A hundred percent. Wow. A hundred percent. I mean, that's yeah. kind of fucking gross, dude. Well, you know what it is? It's a Louis Vuitton scarf they make into a face mask. Oh, okay. But pretty soon it will be, pretty soon it'll be a Louis face, you know? Louis leather, yeah. Um, by the way, I always wanted to be one of those guys who had the capital to make a business immediately. Because let me tell you right now, if you could make bedazzled face masks and shit, and you could just start pumping them out, you would make a couple million right now. Yeah, Easy. that that lady on Easy. YouTube. That lady on YouTube last night did the sock thing, and now my daughter's doing it, and it's incredible. You take a sock, you cut off the toe, and you cut off the other thing, so you just have a square. Then you cut halfway down on two sides you put a napkin in it you flip it over and the little thing goes over and it's actually working so people are just crazy people are just you know here's, here's what i think we're going to realize about this virus going forward we're going to realize two things we're going to realize it was worse than we thought it wasn't a flu but yeah. i think we're also going to realize it wasn't as transmissible as we thought and i'll cite one thing there was a cruise called the grand princess cruise you remember that everybody's like yes. where's it going to dock when they tested everybody on that, everybody in that cruise is living together and eating together and stuff like that. Um, that cruise, only 17% of people tested positive. Wow. So what, what I think this is going to mean is that I think it might take a while to get this. That's why I think it's clusters. It's families. People you work with over, you know what I mean? Like people that you see uh, for what Now, it doesn't mean that you can't randomly get it. Of course you can randomly get it. You might Somebody might cough and have a high viral load and get it. But what I think you're seeing is that families are getting it. People that are, 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 are in close proximity right. to each other are getting it. Like, dude, you could have been, you could have been infected at that Mexican restaurant. You also could have been infected by someone you know who is asymptomatic. Yeah. Well, you we, could found have been out, infected. Yeah. we found out that at that dinner, one of my wife's really good friends was there and uh, she had all the symptoms and lost the smell and taste. And um, we are finding, and that's one thing that I did want to tell. And people. now, and now you sue her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they're no longer friends. And yeah, and that's it. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I remember I drove you, me and you, yeah. did, this is hilarious. Me and you were in Queens at the, what was the one in Queens? The one in uh, the little one that the stand had the sister, the, the laughing death no the, no it was the, the, the it was, standing room it was the, the standing. standing room so we yeah. were in the standing room which was the worst uh like layout of a comedy club maybe ever i remember a couple came to see me and a guy goes yeah. hey and i was so fucking embarrassed, embarrassed was, yeah um but anyway we i drove you home that night and then we went from there and then me and you were eating seafood in beverly hills yes uh, how long ago literally almost like right before this Things were good. I mean, things were really good. Oh. That was the good times. That was right before um, this all happened, right? It was like on the edge of it because we talked about it briefly. I was out there. Yeah, I was out there. I did the comedy store. I saw you. I did the main room at the comedy store on February 27th. Yes. And then yes. you came in later that night. You were in the other room and I saw you and then we talked and then we yes. decided we went out to eat. And um, yeah. It was, it was awesome. I got to tell you, dude, like I went in there, I was so fucking psyched to see yeah. you out there and yeah, just it was fun crushing and having a good well, time. About LA it, yeah. is you'll just see somebody like, what's his name was in this, in the crowd. Uh, Sh Michael Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, out there. And I'm just like, the dude's just sitting back there at like late, like yeah. laughing and then just leaves. And I'm like, dude, I was bombing one night and I'm looking at Channing Tatum just like kind of laughing at what I'm doing. And it's like, oh, fuck you, Chad. Are you serious? Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like kind of laughing. Like I, when I say bombing, I had like, you know, it was a late night set. You know, 35% of the room is with me. 35% of the room doesn't know where they are anymore. And 35% of the room is writing the check. And then Channing Tatum was like kind of laughing. And like, I looked at him quick. I didn't realize it was him. And then my friend was like, oh, yeah, Channing Tatum was kind of laughing at what you were doing. I was like, oh, great. So, yeah. That's the fun thing about the comedy store. Some of the most famous people in the world are going to see you have a rough time sometimes. That's you. Yeah, it's just. Good. Shia LaBeouf gave me a big hug one night. He was clearly hammered. I mean, he says he stopped drinking, but like, 
You know, I mean, I said I was on keto. People say a lot of things. He said uh, he was hammered. He gave me a hug and he's like, you're a genius. I'm like, who is this drunk? I'm like, who is this drunk, right? That's fucking it hilarious. Was Guy it was just hilarious. And it's like, yeah. oh, you have no idea who this, you know. So that's a fun thing about L.A. Yeah. It, with, I feel like in New York, a lot of times the, the big star or huge celebrity is a comic. Like, yes. Those, like at, at the cellar, you'll see these guys, you'll be like, oh, shit. But I used to be afraid. One of my biggest fears was performing in front of, in yeah. front of like, rock or or perform right music. sure and then like now it's like when you just go in there it's like my act's not going to change i'm doing what i do right you know I what i mean so I you're do. just going to do it and they're either going to like it and say you know who was in there who's the, the childish gambino with donald glover uh, yeah 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 he was at the yeah. he was at the cellar and like he was with a group of people this is like right after the solo movie came out or a little right and he was just he was just like laughing and stuff and like why do i give a fuck who's even here right yeah yeah <laughs> i mean the great thing about new york why i love new york is that the famous people in New York are people you don't know. They're, 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 yeah. some of them are chefs, some of them are designers, fashion designers, hedge fund managers, uh, you know, some of them are, are, are big journalists, big professors. Like, New York has a lot of different industries. LA's one industry, and it's famous, it's, 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 it's Hollywood, right? Yeah. But New York will have the best motherfuckers from every industry, and a lot of them you don't know until you know. Like, you'll be like, you know, I used to read about real estate and you'd see these little pint sized women that you'd be like, who's this? You're just a woman walking down the street. And it's like, you know, this woman sold a billion dollars of real estate last year. And you'd, you'd be like, but she's got two cell phones and yeah. she's talking in, she speaks American and Japanese and, and Chinese. And it's like, so you don't really know yeah. who's who in New York. That's a great thing about New York. You're like, who the fuck is that guy? It's like that guy owns three built like you don't know yeah it's like that and, guy, you know chelsea piers that guy built it <laughs> yeah right right i mean dude yeah. that's the type of that's why i love new york my heart breaks for fucking new york you know how much i used to come back to new york people used to say to me do you still fucking live here i used to come back every two weeks to new york you know what i mean do you do you find yeah. do you find that los angeles compared to new york now that you're living out there and yeah. i know that there's a lot of shit talking or but amongst yeah. comedians of, of la right. and what and i gotta be yeah. honest man i went out there and i was like yeah. i'm coming out here more dude like this is yeah yeah it's great this is a it the people are you know the people are just like a lot of the shit's in your dude, head i'm a i'm a dude i've always considered myself like a fucking bi-coastal dude because dude my friends in la would call me they'd facetime me and i'd be sitting in long island or brooklyn eating clams so dude i used to fucking dude i used to go to the airport on a fucking wednesday not tell anybody and yeah. just get on a plane dude that's the type of life i want back because i love la but i if i got sick of la dude i used to just bounce to new york i would go to vegas i would go to vegas for three days i'd go to dallas texas not fucking tell anybody just go eat at a few restaurants I mean, you there. are free as a fucking bird. Like you could, like, free. yeah, free. no kids. You don't yeah, have nothing. Get, there's not. You don't have any lockdown. You could no. fucking at a drop. Thirty-five. Of yeah, South Beach, that, Miami. You know, yeah, do some I, blow. I can do anything. And I, I <laughs> love. Yeah, dude, I can't do that. I, I now I can't. Like, I'm like anyone still doing drugs or smoking cigarettes. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? Um, wait till this ends, please. Um, <laughs> but I was free, and here's what I miss, man. I miss the freedom. I yeah. miss the freedom of being able to go to New York, go to Boston, go to D.C. Because, like, I love L.A., but here's the deal. Now that I'm trapped here, I don't love any place I'm trapped. Right. You know? So is that going to – yeah, do you think, like, uh, I was talking to this comedian yesterday, and he was going, I don't know if I'm going to be able to look at New York the same after – this panic and the the way the roads like imagine being in Midtown right now looking out your fucking window dude and there's yeah. people that can take a car across the entire island without anything like just I know and, and it's really but you know what it is we will look at it the same way it'll come back New York is the most resilient city in the world it's gonna come back I mean, hard I think yeah New York there there is no greater city than New York City uh at ever ever at all so the reality is is that there's no, there's no it's the capital of the world. Yeah. Um, it is a global city. It's, it's an American city, but it's a global city. I mean, people from all over the world fall in love with New York. It's New York's coming back. You know, it's going to take a bit. It's going to be tough. But New York City is coming back. I'm a lot, you know, here's what's crazy, dude. Yeah. L.A. will come back too, but L.A. is going to change, man. People hate celebrities now. The movie business is dying. 
Um, you're seeing a lot of indications that these big movie theater chains maybe won't reopen. L.A. might restructure more than New York. So you think that you think that when everything gets better and a big movie's released, you think the movie theater is going to get hurt? I don't know. It depends when everything gets better, but the AMC may not reopen. They're 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 in real big trouble yeah. financially. Um, yeah, for sure. TV man. shows, TV shows right now are getting, you know, the biggest shows on TV are getting three to five million, view, uh, uh, you know, viewers. Yeah. Uh, your most people, their favorite show, they watch three to five episodes of. You know, this is yeah. how how much content is out there. So the traditional modes of media is, I think, going to evolve. LA will always be LA. Everybody will flock to LA to try to get famous. But I, I think that it's going to be different. And I think that, like, the social media guys, the YouTube guys, those guys are going to be the kings of the castle here very soon. It's going to be guys like Logan Paul and David Dobrik, and it's not going to be Brad Pitt. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, my, that's Tim Dillon's prediction. Oh, wow. And it's going to be those guys. And then those guys are going to go into politics because in 20 years, they're not going to be appealing to 16 year old girls. They're going to be older. They're going to be married. They're going to have a shitload of money, but here's what they're going to have. They're going to have something that people pay millions of dollars for. They're going to have data. They're yeah. going to have follower counts of maybe tens of millions. Who knows by that point, maybe a hundred million people are following them. Yeah. Those are going to be the people that launch campaigns to be president. Oh, now you're going I've, deep into a pre Now you're going long-term prediction. I talked to Logan Paul. I would like to be his campaign manager if he runs for president. And I think we should start in about eight years. And I spoke to him about that. I'm dead serious. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm building a podcast studio in my house, dude. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, here's the thing. He won't be that bad at it. This is what's really killing people. Logan Paul will not be the worst president. Logan Paul. What about, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You're, you're a guy that, you're a guy that could adapt. You're, yeah. a guy that, you're a guy that could, you were in sale. I was in sale. I was selling, dude, I was selling yeah. phone cable internet door to door in Queens. Listen, I I do, gonna... I, yeah, I do anything where you don't need a college degree. Yeah, so you were in sales. Yeah, sales, comedy, anything where you don't need a degree. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't do the checking of references, but other than that, I'm in. I would love to see, here's what I would wish one day. An angry Tim Dillon. Angry, though. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. want you, like, maybe even, like, a little hungry. You'd Give like, me another last, month. It'll be yeah, there. We'll be the there. last few meals were bad. And then I yeah. want to see you. Yes. I would, then I would like to see you in that situation give a political speech. I want you running. Yes. <laughs> I want you. I want yeah, you. Maybe. You, yeah. be the, you could be the mayor of Long Island. I might. Listen, I mean, we had a show idea where I ran for, like, city council on Long Island. No. Dead. Are you serious? I swear to God. Like, I'm really telling you, ran. dude. You got to do that really ran as a bit and it would, would be hilarious i mean now obviously we can't do it but like that's the idea that we had would you ever get into politics if you were 55 60 years old and you were just and and people you had a huge following would you ever do that i mean i don't think they'd have me i might dude i think it would be fun as fuck to run for mayor i don't, I don't think, think they'd I'd have me i i i mean let me tell you right now i'd have so much fun doing it yeah. i'd have so much fun doing it uh but I, I, would be yeah. Your speeches would be, it would be watched. It would be the best. Yeah. 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 But I really do believe that. I think that like traditional actors are in trouble. I don't mean that they're yeah. not going to succeed or whatever, but I think that like going forward, it's going to be a lot less like, you know, Jurassic parks and it's going to be a lot more, you know, uh, this kid has a YouTube channel with all of these people, and now he's just fucking minting money and making his own movies. Yeah, he's making his own stuff, and people are making their own stuff and they're putting it out. I just think the studio system will. Oh, listen, it's all going to always be there to an extent. Yeah, but I mean, even look now, right? Look, look at the way it is now. Podcasting is much more profitable than stand-up comedy. When you look at, exclude the top 20 stand-ups, yeah. the top 30 stand-ups, look at people earning money off podcasts and look at people earning money off stand-up. Podcasting has become more profitable, you know? I think that you're going to see 
regular traditional movies just get less, they're already getting less profitable. Yeah. Once the theaters start to have problems, it's going to kind of be the death knell. And there will always be traditional movies, but I think we're going to see a lot more independent stuff. And independent, by the way, I don't mean like a guy with a camera. I mean like guys that have millions and millions of dollars from other things that are now able to make their own stuff. I, I agree with that. I think you're going to see a lot of people who made money off the internet be able to get their friends and make their own movies and put it yes. online and, and, and PS and people are going to see it too. I do think though, people do love going on a date to the movie theater. Yes. I don't think all of them are going to die. They're not all going to die. It's just going to be like, it's going to be like anything else. It's going to evolve. It'll have to evolve. Maybe the movie theaters, they were already starting to get better, better chairs, better food. It's going to have to be an experience because what's going to happen pretty soon is after this pandemic, it is going to change people's calculation of going to a public place. They are going to say, we've got a beautiful fucking TV. We can watch something here. Are we going to chance, until there's a vaccine for this shit, are we going to chance going out to a public place right. where we can turn around and get sick? And, you know, it's going to change things, I think, a little bit. Yeah, no, I think so too. I'm, I'm really curious to see if people are going to jump right back in. What about the NBA and the NFL? Think about that. It's like you got well, the, NFL, the NFL. Yeah. yeah, if the NFL goes down, it's going to be a big emotional, psychological thing because those guys that own those teams, those if, if anybody's in the Illuminati, it's those fucking billionaires that own those NFL teams, right? If yeah. they can't, if they can't get that league open, we're fucked. Like it, that I'm means just, this is deadly yeah. serious. Yeah, Trump was telling the owners last week and he called the owners and the commissioner I heard and he said you guys are going in September. You know, cuz you got yeah. you, know, you know there's 65,000 seats. Yeah. That's you know, <laughs> right. crazy. I mean, here's the thing dude. I mean, listen, we all got to see what happens. Here's what could also happen. We could let everybody out and the thing could peter out or we could let everyone out and then we could have this massive outbreak and then we could go, "Uh-oh, we got to go back in." Part of that is going to be learning, learning what happens when we all leave. Yeah. I, you know, I was talking to, uh, to actually Burr. I was talking to Burr and he was saying, yeah. you know, let's just hope that this was, and obviously like this was before, I mean, uh, people dying. So everybody wants to understand yeah. everybody's upset about the people dying. But like, if, if we can get out of this thing as, as best as possible, then this needs to be a dry run for if this ever happens. This can never happen again, dude. We, cause here's the bottom line. They weren't prepared for this. We were not no, prepared for this. No, Nobody no. saw it. Nobody was prepared for it. People heard about it. Dude, this was on the cover. Remember um, Kobe Bryant, rest his soul. Yes. Kobe Bryant died on January 26th. And there's, yes, a, there's a picture of him and his daughter. And they say, you know, Kobe Bryant, daughter amongst seven people, died in a helicopter. Yeah. You know what was next to that? Coronavirus. Vaccines trying to get coronavirus. That was January 26th, dude. And we're in the yeah. shit storm that we're in right now. So it's like... They weren't it's ready. a failure. It's a massive failure. It is a failure. massive fucking failure, and it's going to hurt Trump, I think. It's going to hurt Trump, and I mean, uh, the, the thing that helps Trump right now is he's running in an election against a guy that doesn't know his name. So the Democrats, <laughs> have, the yeah, Democrats have once again managed, like, I'm not a political guy. Man, I miss the 90s. Remember when no one cared in the 90s and the president was a doofus? I still Every don't movie, care. I still, Dude, I still don't carry that. But every movie in the 90s portrayed the president as a guy we laughed at. Like, that was the healthier way to look at it. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. so intense politically right now. It's like, guys, it relax. The country's either going to end or it won't. Like, we're either in, like, we're either, it's over or it, maybe it won't be. But it's, the president's not changing anything. So just relax and go back to the 90s. Dude, I remember that was maybe my favorite decade because I was a kid. I was fucking 12, 13, 14. But I was remembering, you know, people were just, nobody gave a shit. Yeah. Like nobody was fighting. You never had a fight. Like I never saw adults fighting about politics yeah. the way yeah. that, and even in the early 2000s, like now people are fighting. But I'm like, dude, there's more to life. There's just simply more to life than whether you love or hate Trump. Do something good for some. If you're so concerned about things, do something good for someone on your own. You know what? Amen to that. And I think that one thing that what needs to die from this, and maybe it will, Tim. Yeah. These fucking 
PC bloggers and yeah, all that gone. When this is done, you're going to go out and you're going to have a glass of fucking wine or a margarita. Yeah. And you're going to see a live show. We're going to go. So the last thing you want to fucking hear about is somebody who's upset with the words coming out of somebody's mouth that's trying to fucking entertain you. Yeah, they're so, gone. The, P, the PC go. bloggers are gone. They're going. They should. Um, they're going. The comedians that made a living solely on the industry are going to go because yep. the industry is not going to make any money in the near future. Um, a lot of that's going to go and people, actual comedy will come back. A lot of people will leave the business. A lot of people will, will unfortunately not be able to do it probably, but a lot of those people weren't doing great anyway. And I think this is going to, because when people go out now, I'll tell you one thing, they're going to want to fucking laugh. They're not going to want bullshit. I agree. No, yeah. I agree. Like this is not, this is going to make people realize. And some of those people that are going to come back to those clubs lost somebody, you know, Correct. especially in New York. So the last thing they're going to give a fuck about is, are you, they're going to just want to laugh and have a good time and get away from it, man. And that's, right. that's what I hope we get back to, you know, I hope so fans. too. I hope um, so too. Listen, dude, I thank you so much. Thank you, man. I oh, appreciate dude, it. I, listen, man, I, I'm so happy to have you on here. And I'm, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to have a new studio in here. I'm going to be doing this. But yeah. I want to do it with people that I truly love, people that I yeah. think are so funny. And you fall in that yeah. category, buddy. Well, thank you, brother. Uh, I appreciate it. Likewise, give my best to everybody. You know, we'll, we'll get through it, man. It's going to be interesting. But like you said, New York's not going anywhere. No. Comedy's not going anywhere. It's all about when and when and when and how we can get back at it. I think that it's gonna when it does come back, yeah. the comedians and the crowds are gonna be with a vengeance and be psyched. And I think it's gonna be a rejoicing thing where people are so thrilled. I just hope that yeah. it doesn't take so long to get there. And and obviously sooner than later. Uh, and Tim, let uh, everybody listening to this know the stuff that you have and where they could see all of your stuff online. Yeah, this is. Uh... Tim Dillon uh, show is on YouTube. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's everywhere you can get podcasts. The Tim Dillon show, and Tim J Dillon D I L L O N is on Instagram and Twitter. The Tim Dillon show YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that if you like. Um, that's pretty much it. There's no live dates at the moment. We'll let you know when they're back. I mean, I'm telling all my people like, don't buy tickets unless I know. We're doing the show. Cause it's fine at a theater. Theaters will refund. Yeah. Some of these comedy clubs will give people credit for other shows. Then maybe some of them close. People lose their money. I don't want to. I'm just like, hey, when I know I'm back, I'll let you guys know you buy tickets, you know? Yeah, that's, but that's, that's, exactly, that's, it. that's exactly what I'm doing. I love how, like, when you do shows now, people go, somebody yeah. actually said during this, Paul, what do you got coming up? I go, buddy, I'm organizing my sweatpants draw. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah, what yeah. <laughs> what do I have coming up? Lunch. <laughs> Tim, you, you are you, the brother. best, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Dude, anytime. You're one of my favorites, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Thank you, my friend. Okay, bye.